Hey. Hey. We're back with more Disco Elysium. Are we going to get that body down today? Well, uh, I think now that we've uh, managed to look at it. Without puking? Without puke. Well, we puked a few times, but now I think we can really give it a good look Man over. Before you is naked, so we got to go through all of these. His skin is marbled with decaying veins and blotched by living It seems I've been expected. On his chest. Ooh. A fading web of tattoos. The cargo belt used to hang him from the tree looks reinforced. So he's uh, he's tied to a tree with <clears throat> like in, and the belt is reinforced. Looks I mean, like, we might as well just inspect everything. Well, check out the boots. That seems to be uh, the material yeah. appears to be ceramic. Hmm. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. How did he the get man ceramic wore thick polymer socks? Probably for padding. These are good the questions to ask, us being detectives and all. Covers them. Delicate and fragile. They feel alien to the world around you. Hmm. Out of place somehow. These boots don't belong. These are clearly not boots. They're armor. Like I said, oh. they look like night armor. It's armor. These aren't just boots, <coughs> are they? They're armor. Indeed. <laughs> Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. Oh, oh, sabotons, right. Oh, the lieutenant uses a memo technique, A6. That's not just any notebook. It's a classic. Thanks. Super useful to know. It's all you, baby. <laughs> what kind of armor is this, exactly? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fair weather. The material Fair looks weather out of place. C500 VE. I'm guessing that V3 is in armor. This is advanced stuff. <clears throat> Material looks out of place here. It is. It's expensive. Expensive? We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabulary deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatic. <laughs> okay, how much are we talking about? For a full set, about four years. What? For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average year <laughs> income is five thousand five hundred real. <clears throat> uh, yeah, you should, you should take them. <laughs> Wait, my yearly pay is fifty five hundred real. Not too much. Pathetic. I need to hustle more and hate less. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to the rest of it? The locals probably scavenged it. It would be odd if he had more arms after seven days. Yeah, well... We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Ma what? Maybe yeah. he was just wearing the boots? Yeah, maybe just the boots and nothing else. That'd be a little weird, though. No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of That's armor true. is often worn under fabric. Okay, damn, using logic again. Okay. Really? Like, that makes sense. Under Armour? What if they told him to strip before they hung him? You know, to demean him. They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre. The Mazda. The Besmerti and the like. This one still has his underpants. Oh, really? It's and, like, everything else. It's kind of hard to tell. I mean, he's, he, he's got I'm his... I'm like, yeah, is he naked or... He's He's got his underwear, which are a very, uh, I guess form-fitting pair of tidy whities and of course the sabaton unless they're long underwear well they could be long underwear <laughs> well i mean fucking kuno kuno would like to interject something here but there's not enough for him to hold on to how could this man afford such expensive hardware that's for us to find out my initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbour Company. These look pretty the advanced for a security guard. I agree. I agree. Uh, we, we, we're, we're all, we're all agree. Yeah, 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 I agree. I agree. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Yes. <clears throat> um, That's, uh, what's this thing sound yeah. like? A small bell-like sound fills the air, like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. Sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate. Dissipating it entirely. See? Faint 
Organic lines cover the plates where they separate into small. So it's really advanced uh, armor here. Into small yeah, how the hell do you get them on? There are hundreds of them altogether. Like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic, influenced by highly resistant wood material like lignum vitae and What does this remind me of? If trees were made of porcelain, this is what their cross sections would be. <clears throat> ah, yes. A smooth, glossy surface fractures into so, more intricate. So, it's like a toilet. Peeking on the right sabaton, where you notice. Really good toilet armor, I guess. Yeah. The worlds are in the shape of a letter number combination. E15, 100. Oh, oh serial number! Got a serial number here. Good. Can you read it to me? X54156745. <laughs> Six, seven, eight, Why would you two, 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 say two. the other thing if it's Let's that? Lie. Let's lie. We are not going. No, to, don't no, lie to him. No, we are not going to lie. E five zero one zero zero one zero zero. Yeah. We're making a number. That thing thing. We can use the radio in Nightingale when we're done. We uh, uh, pull the boot off. Right. All right. So yeah, definitely report in this, this armor. See where it's been. Who has it? The stench fills your nostril as you push downward. An ominous creaking sound. Comes from above. Uh, uh, is it gonna snap? Uh oh. <laughs> oh shit. Uh, uh oh. Lieutenant, you seem distressed. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to hear him say it. <laughs> <laughs> do what? Pull his head off. There's no point performing a notice to do. We have compromised the coroner's case. Indeed. From this angle, it does look like the leg isn't going to take much more. Ah, uh, uh, Can you still not get up there? Like this muscle. I mean, someone to had to have went up there. Why are you hanging on to that boot? Well, I, I, um... Are we not detectives? Are we not detectives? There may be clues inside this, inside this boot. I mean, come on! This is the only thing that are left here! How many clues do you need? You already found the number. Besides... There's no way you're getting them on. Well, oh. how do you fucking get them on there then? So he put them on, but for some reason they weren't interested in them. So as long as he's been hanging up there, fused to his feet. Yeah, all, all, all the, the blood, all the yeah. blood in his in his internal juices just went down to his. They just flowed They're down to his to his feet. Bloated down there. So they're stuck yep. on there. They're just bloated feet now. They are just stuck on there. You're sure. There's a way to peel them off, but first the body needs to be down, and second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. We can get our hands on these boots if we want to, and we can do a lot of things after dark, after the lieutenant goes to bed and he won't be judging us for it. You know, we can take drugs and steal boots and sell them and yeah, keep the money. Sounds like a plan. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Yeah. Feels ah, nice. nice and cracky. Nice and cracky. Ooh, ah, crack, 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 crack. Nice. Oh, we are truly detectives. We're true, true detectives. I mean, see, see, look, look, look at that white square on my jacket. Yeah, that proves what's it. Gonna happen. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, I, I don't have a badge right now, and okay, I, I don't have my gun right now, but trust me, real police officer, Kim can vouch for me. Okay. So what's gonna happen to the boots then? Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? So it won't be too big of a deal if we t if, if the boots don't make it back. Cool. I, th I think just, you know, the body itself is what's important. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. The belt. All right, so that's the boots. We're going to get that after dark. Extremities blotched paint. That's not even noon yet. Shit. All right, let's, let's look at the belt that's holding him up. The hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of corpse below. Yellow, hard-edged polyester cuts into his neck. Above, that we almost a took off. A buckle ties the belt to the branch. It's just so... Like, we could easily just get it off. It's so close. This is a steel-reinforced cargo lashing belt. Big brother of the regular cargo belt. <laughs> this is obviously not a regular rope. six rotor airship. All right, don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. <laughs> I thought it was used on lorries or trapping cargo to them. Yeah, that too. Apparently, this is the reinforced kind for air transport. My my brain tells me so. My brain. 
The yeah. local harbor uses six rotors to shuttle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying uh, much attention to not incriminating themselves. I think number one, yeah. We're we assuming dock workers from the harbor did it? The brief suggested as much, politically motivated by the ongoing strike. You <coughs> do not get the briefing? My past has undergone total annihilation. Nothing remains. My mother, the love of my life, certainly not a briefing. Okay. <laughs> You should ask me for one the first moment we get. All right, we'll talk. We'll we'll, we'll get a briefing afterwards. Yes, de detective's intuition. I, I I think he's one of the many voices that this game has. How did they even get him up there? How, yeah, how did they even get him up there? A noose is one of those things that's easy. It's like we obviously can't climb that over there. So how did someone else get him up there? Well, they probably just put like the. All right, it, it looks like. They had a big loop where the sliding buckle was. They slid it over the branch, and they just kind of hoisted it up, and then gravity and and simple machines well, did all the rest those, of the work. What those belts do is they tighten. Yeah, so like, as, it as they tightened, it probably got them good, you know, yeah. What, do they climb up using the kid's ladder? Probably not. That but. ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splinter on it. What about from the roof over there? I think the last two of the branch. That seems a bit too... Bell to close the nah. A bit too outlandish, I'd say. Could be. Really? The shape of the branch Have him the stand right there and then... Just push him off the edge? Hmm. It'd break his neck instantly. Well, they sure wanted him to stay up there. The rope is reinforced with steel wiring. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring. Parallel strength. This makes getting him down yeah, more problematic great. than I assume. Back up. It just means it's going to be more difficult to get him down. From the cargo belt, limb is limb, and Inspect torso covered in tattoos. Ooh, covered in what tattoos. tattoos? Yeah, he's, he's got tattoos. Is that what the black stuff is? Yeah. See, I thought it was just like typical body decay because he's been up there for so long. But yeah, those I are it was like dirt or something. Those are tattoos. An okay. intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks riddle his skin. How good's your intuition, Vi? concentration by? is highest Why? around his Everyone's heart. talking about their, tu their intuition in chat. How good's your intuition? Probably pretty stars. good. Mine's not do see some the best. To astronomical charts. Great century machinery, maybe. But this seems more particular. Customized somehow. As if someone left out most of the night sky, filtering it through mm. personal choice. The principle of this It's more than just a map of the night unknown. sky, there's something to the this. Are they constellations? And you feel as though you were only half right. I'm missing something here. <laughs> What's he got? He wears a wide leather belt around his waist and a gun holster under his arm. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What's that? A trigger sunshine. Mini. Ooh. Triggered is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. <laughs> it's a camera! An instant color camera. Yep. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. Alright, and say cheese! A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the break of a small ampoule. That's glass. pleasant. You hey. see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Cool machine. Cool machine, yep. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? It is pretty cool. There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need this photo for? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter to us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later. You know, without the uh, corpse, corpse smell. smell. <laughs> Sure. T oh, shit. I had my thumb over the camera. I did not take the picture correctly. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, 
his mouth look him in the eye. What I eye? I don't want to. They're probably gross. They're closed, aren't they? See, his eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from this. Yeah. Cool. Gross. Aquatic terrors. There. Body horror is gross. Dark brown is hair it? grows on his head. Uh -oh. His face is ready to explode. From the Tell organic me, who are you, inside. dead man? The dead man can speak to us. Passed, what remains is an unrecognizable mess. The corpse nope. is Aww. dead silent. You have no idea why you should say <laughs> that. Who is he? He is male, 40 to 50, with an athletic build. The corpse looks right through you. As you distance yourself Went and take a step back. Stage. Well, we could try and ask him who he is later when we get more Inland Empire points. How are we doing on that, anyway? Alright, we're almost to a level up. Alright, not bad. We'll get more as the game goes on. Alright, let's take a step back, then. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. What? This is a trick. You've done it before. Pink is where the blood settled in the first hours. I'm trying to figure yeah. something out, Detective E. The corpse has been tampered with. Does his position at the time of death match the discoloration? Hmm. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck, just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green oh, in the gosh. cold spring air. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. I see it. His neck, too. The lividity goes right up his chin. We have good, well-pronounced discoloration here. Might be easier to tell when exactly he died, yep. aside from seven days ago. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color, coursing with dark, marbled veins. Blech. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh. And Boy, don't make the same mistake that this loser made. Don't die. So, what do you think? I think he's dead. I think I he's dead. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead. The world no longer stores his personality in its composition. Back. <laughs> there was a time for that, and it ended seven days ago. One or four? Four. No siree. <laughs> <laughs> no siree. He's beaten up. Is it bruises? I do. Most of them are post mortem. Maybe even all of them. Yeah, it's almost like someone's been throwing rocks at him for days. <sighs> Kuno! <laughs> Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. <laughs> I think he was up right after death. His hands, feet, and neck are discolored. Agreed. Especially on the neck. The best acted like the tourniquet, keeping the blood on his head. The hypothesis supports a hanging. Could it still be he was moved after death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down. Yeah. Something is coming out of him. Something is coming out of him. Of blood and feces as uh, frozen mud below the man's feet. You know, I think I know why I didn't want to be a cop anymore. I think I know why I drunk myself to death having to deal with this shit. Yeah. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? <sighs> Talking about shit. <laughs> Maybe he went to the toilet sometime before death. Maybe. Huh? <laughs> yeah, maybe again. All right, but let's stand back a little bit. We looked at the Only belt. The fit in the now, how do we get him down? Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's down. Well, let's uh, step back and have another look first. I want to see if we can see if we can talk to him before he falls. See if we can't get okay. him down. So what I want to do, let's go uh, look, because I don't think we have any info about ourselves at all. Yeah, see, we, we over here we have our our officer profile. It's incomplete. And here are our journals, of course. So let's see, body, all this stuff. Okay, all right. So we got some new quests here too. Yay. Well, in the last episode, uh, Kim revealed that uh, these white squares on the back of our of our uh, uniforms actually have halog uh, halogen watermarks. So if we look at his uh, 
Kinema Supreme here, whatever it is, we can uh, tell, get an idea about our record as a detective. A radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and a Hey, Kim, how do I turn on the headlights? How do I turn on them? Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. Engine starter! The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The rounds of the roof came to the jumps. That car. With a whiny growl, like a leopard waking from its sleep, yawning and roaring at the same time. Headlights. The with a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. Okay, let's see. As you hold your letters clipped under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Reva Cholwes. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. What's the street grid? Ooh. The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet, the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stock lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than a child's cry. Ah, Martinez. <laughs> Whatever you say, Kim. Really? Where are we on this map? Let me see. Right here. Seems like a shithole. It has its problems. I still got the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. All right, let's tally them up. The first row has 18 dots. Not okay. bad. Not bad. Not bad for what? You don't even know what it means yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. okay, fine. What, what about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Let's count them individually. You count 216 <gasps> perforations. Considering Ooh. that nice, large number, a wave of pride washes over you. Though you can't say why, precisely. Yeah, 216 sounds like a nice, nice good number. I don't know. It's... What about that last row? The last row has three perforations. Three? Three? That's it? That's it. Uh, Alright, uh, hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record, Officer Dalton did. Let's take a look. Okay. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers often do. It's meant. Which means that I'm an alpha male officer? <laughs> the first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? Got Wait. drunk like a megastar. Wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what yeah. Says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? Got drunk like a megastar? Yes, that does seem quite likely. <laughs> your youth coincided with some heady days for Eva <laughs> but Let's move on, shall we? You get a sponge. What do these holes mean? Uh, what do all these holes mean, Kim? This next row. The one that wraps all the way around is your number of closed cases. Shit! Ooh, closed cases. 216. You could more than 200. 216 to be exact. It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. So... So you're a super cop. I, I used to be a super cop? Call it what you want. <laughs> Call it what you, you want. Super, super cop. Super cop, yeah. Super now, cop. Look, right. Those are your confirmations. So You've got precisely... So I'm a killer? So I'm a killer. For an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the general quarter, it's rather... Jesus. Insane. I mean that in a good way. I guess that's that, that kind of sounds like, you know, you know, for a for a cop that lives in inner city Chicago, three kills, not too bad. For 18 years. <laughs> for 18 <really>. years. 
Yeah, it goes Spider Cop, Super Cop, Robo Cop. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. Hmm. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? Yes. He's just, yes. Ah, uh, there must, must be a sore spot for him. How, How do you handle, handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Maybe I should find a hobby. Hobbies are lame. <laughs> Suit yourself. Very Suit no yourself. Are we done here? Yeah, thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. Okay, let's go. Right. I'll go to nod the light. You can now see your statistics on your journal page to the right of the task description. All right, I want to radio in that uh, serial number. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone. All right, pull, pull up the radio here. The frequency tableau lights up, and the green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something, the soft purr of electrical kittens. Radio electrical oh, kittens. Far electrical kitties. Metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the static. This is Precinct 57. Hello, Lieutenant. How may I assist you? Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. Operating the radio is easy. Just be confident. You've probably done it a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, God. Wait. Go down a little? Oh, because there's the link. Uh, do three. Oh, you want to be boring? <laughs> okay, fine, do two. Come in, Delta 10. This is Firewalker Copy. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I help you? <laughs> Under the green prime line, a yellow saved button catches your eye. You uh, well. Lieutenant's default radio station is. See, we, we can call her as many times as we want to, but uh, we can call our precinct, and I'd rather not do that because they're a bunch of dick bags. We can connect. <laughs> we, we can connect to a civilian, but I don't want to talk to her until we have about everything that we need. Just yeah, just run the serial number. Let's just run the serial number for now. Sir, what's the number? And the make of the arm, if you know it. E five zero one zero zero one zero zero zero. The make and model of the armor is Fairweather T five hundred VE. So, come back on day two. She'll tell us something about the armor. The International Collaboration Thanks. ICP is an inter isolated law enforcement service. <laughs> thank you. ICP, uh, huh? Thank you. Th thank you, Encyclopedia. EPIS and the Coalition Government. All right, I'm done with the radio for now. 57, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers. What? All right. That's about all we need to do here. Check well. your journal. All right. Still not up for, not for a level up yet. No, How your we... journal down there. Our journal over here? Yeah. All right. Got to inspect the body, which we're... Oh, map. We're getting there. Oh, the map. We don't have a map. Well, it had, like... Like something you need to check on it. We don't have a map right now. I don't know. It now it went away. See the dot's gone. What dot? What? There was a dot. Oh, like you had. You're something. looking at this. The one that says done over here. No, it was on the map, and now it's gone. Well, okay, fine. Uh, I think it takes seven days. I'm not too sure. All right. Well, I don't want to report my badge missing. I'd rather find it first. Uh, find who put the clothes in the trash. Call Sylvie. Call Sylvie. Find the rest of the armor. Run the number, which we just did. Get the boots. Get briefed after, uh, the end of the day. And figure out what we know about the tattoos. So! So. Where to now? Hmm. South? Wanna go south? Okay. Somebody, something in my brain wants to tell, wants to tell me something. 
Well, maybe. This place is kind of run down like crap, isn't it? What's that? What's what? Humanitarian aid. It's macaronis and tuna fish. It's humanitarian aid food? Uh-huh. There's a pile of cheap sunglasses in a small box. A variety of shapes and colors. You like sunglasses, officer? I've got the latest style right here. These are all boring. <laughs> box of boring sunglasses. I hate boring sunglasses. Plastic that melts in the sun. Boring uh, cheap crap. Ho hum. Boring cheap third rate melting sunglasses. Almost certainly just <laughs> made for the show. If it's not even no, they don't even do what sunglasses are supposed to do. Really? A UV magnifier? These are all first rate sunglasses. Premium design. Bullshit. Material. Very cool. UV resistant. These will definitely keep your eyes safe and cool while doing your dangerous police work. Uh this guy needs to be arrested somehow. Yeah. Alright, can we find anything good in this box? Hey! hey! A pair of water blue shades! Sub. Hand carved oh out my, of bone? What the fuck is that? Ooh, sub insulindic rendezvous! Oh, very interesting choice, officer! Very high kosher! This is how a sea monster sees the world. You, <laughs> become, a sea you become a sea Giant monster! I, I am the Kraken. Tempered, hot. All is blue. All right. But these actually make your vision worse. It's like literally being underwater. What? Mm. Wow, officer. You look so cool. And they can be yours for a mere three real. My regular three bucks? Three? Because they've got no tape. But you found them. Yeah, Kim, what about these? The lieutenant tilts his head and steps back, eyes narrowed in a thorough <laughs> examination. It's a case to him. <laughs> You look like a musician, like a blind musician. But you could like a work. blind musician. Well, I'll take these cool deep blue glasses. A man who knows his style. Much respect. Bye. Bye. Let's put them on. Yeah. Ooh, baby. Ooh. Disappointing that the entire screen isn't tinted blue Right? Now. I was going to say, I'm like, does it tint everything blue? No, it doesn't. All right. Some games do that, others don't. So. But you're looking snazzy now. We see here that the this drawbridge is up. Yeah. And, well, let's figure out why that's happened. Okay. Water lock out of order until Wednesday, 7.15. That's, uh, day three. Which means that everything over there is inaccessible until day three when, when this gets fixed. This right here. Butter sign down. Oh, I didn't even see that guy there. Good day to you, officers. A burly man hangs out by the water lock, carving up a generous serving of salami. I was saying, like, is he about to cut us? No, so he's, he's cutting some meat and some salami. On a man stranded on the other side of the water lock and on an enormous billboard that has fallen down into the canal between them. Okay, first things first. What are you doing here, man on the water lock? My friend Barry the Butcher is stuck on the other side of the water lock. Oh no! I'm keeping him company and eating his salami. From the corner <laughs> of your eye, I'm keeping him company and eating his food. Good. Shirt oh! Gray Hi, Barry! Hi, Barry! Barry! Oh, is that him over there? Hi! Hi, Barry! Hi, Barry! And the salami. Very good stuff. Anything I can do for you, officer? Uh, do you know what caused this wreckage? I wasn't here to witness it, but those look like tire tracks on that sign. Weird, huh? Then again, plenty of daredevil drivers in Rivershall. Too bad it also takes a year and a day to repair anything around here. Jeez. Water lock. The rest of the coast is or three days. And do you know what's further down the coast? Can I have well, some of that salami? Village, an abandoned fish market, 
a bizarro church. Bizarro church. I want to see that. Oh, do you know what this guy is doing? He is absolutely teasing us for what's going to happen in day three. It's like, oh yeah, there's yeah. a fishing village, a fish market, a fish church. Yeah, we got a uh, fish church. <laughs> we <laughs> got a fish brothel. Got a fish tax service. <laughs> Everything's just fish. We even got fish urgent care. Yeah, not really much else. Just bombed out ruins. I have some salami. of that salami. Yeah, I, I want, want some of that salami. Sure thing. Hey, hey what a fella! You're, no. you're a. Why not? Hey, what a fella! Hey, yeah, Kim. Oh, mm. Man, what a guy. What a fucking guy, right? right? What a All right, you take care. All right, so we're kind of stuck on this part of Revishal until uh, until uh, Wednesday. Ooh, I found, some, go in I there. found some gloves. <gasps> Fingerless gloves. Fingerless gloves. That helps my electrochemistry. Then, so electrochemistry or interfacing? Hmm. I don't know, I'm gonna go they're with both the, good? I'm gonna go with the fingerless gloves for now. Yeah. Because they're new and they match the new shades. That's true, they're right? blue. Yeah. Yep. Can you go in there? Yeah, where? In here? Yeah. Let's zoom in. Oh, whoa. Wait. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, get that. Ah, some Healing. Help. Very nice. Ooh, groovy. What's in here? Welcome to the pawn shop. <gasps> pawn shop. I like this guy. It's not often that I see officers from the RC Roy. my pawn shop. This is Bird's Nest Roy. He owns the pawn shop. What can I do for you? Uh, sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting you. Oh, no, not at all. I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers, usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers. People looking for a deal. People looking for a keepsake. People, People who are terminally, terminally bored, bored, yes. And I guess cops now. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose Quite from. Quite the collection indeed. Quite the collection indeed. It keeps me entertained. Entertained? I would love to live here. If he is, on what? It's the, ooh, is Roy high? Can I, like, he's he's on the influence of something. He has to then be. Then what is he on? Oh my gosh, Let's really? Let's see. Let me get, 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 get a look, good look at him. Know, see. pretty low. Let's see. Feeling hey! hey! Movement of light while the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. He's probably on Parolidon. It's tough to come by on the street. Parolidon? What's that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects. Radiation and sickness? Holy shit. It makes your eyes turn yellow. This guy's probably seen some shit then. Is it me? Is it really it warm around? your eyes turn yellow. Is oh. it warm in here? I try to keep the shop at a comfortable temperature. It's pretty obvious that you're under the inf Wait, no judgment. No judgment, just curious. I probably did loads of Peraldeon. Peraldeon. Oh, see, back in my day, we called it peace skank, so... <laughs> I've had to take it. You know, since the people's power... Yeah, I figured he'd seen some shit. I was with the emergency relief brigade. Oh. He's, yeah, he's a fucking veteran, I bet. He's taken from The same way people emotion. take marijuana for glaucoma. Physical yep. These days. People's pile? What's that? A bad idea. Some poor leftist built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. Yeah. Now function. Uh, radioactive, radioactive waste, waste hell no. Some of it in you <laughs> oh, cool, we have a diet Chernobyl around here. The people's pile was a type U particle decay generator that failed immediately after entering service. What, what, what's a particle a decay generator? Waste, a primitive nuclear reactor. Uh, oh man, they did a DIY uh, nuclear reactor. Why is it called the People's Pile? Construction began during the Commune of Revishon. The people continued work on it after the Commune fell. They wanted a cheap source of energy for Revishon West. <laughs> Needless to say, things didn't work out. Why did it fail? 
An emergency valve defect resulted in steam pressure blowing the turbine, taking the fuel containment vessel up in the explosion. Both the faulty design and lack of finances contributed to the catastrophe. Hmm, so almost like, um, what was that one that was in real life? It was like the body burners Long or something? Long Island or whatever. Not Long Island, but... Well, it must have been tough. Radioactive cleanup. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget any of it ever happened. And why no one has tried to repair or replace the pile. So much disappointment. An early death. Cancer, mostly. And we knew all that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Alright, whose fault was it? No one's. Everyone's. So everyone is guilty, and everyone is innocent. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor. Yeah. Hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? Dad, you end up with a pawn shop. The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later, my second aunt died. Left me this shack and all the assorted junk in it. Well. So I came to Martinez. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile melt. <laughs> I'm gonna get as far away from Forberg as I can. Still in the same city, but Well hey buddy, thanks for telling me. I like yeah, really. the theory more than the story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices. All right, that's something I like to sell. Let me have a look. Check the pockets. Everything what we got here? We got uh, an we empty cassette boots. case. Is this where we're gonna sell the boots when we get them? Yep. I want to keep that handkerchief. Yeah. But can we sell them? Yes. <laughs> there you go. We don't fucking need it. <laughs> he doesn't need it. We stole. We stole his idea and then we sold it. I love it. And see, the thing is, Roy will be kind of snick, uh, you know, persnickety about certain things, like, oh no, there's certain things that I don't, I don't buy from people. But you know, all right, here is a, here's a worker's uh, ID. He needs to get into his office. Okay, fine. Thirteen <laughs> real. There right, you go. Oh, and have a dime and a few pennies as well. Don't mind me. Another all right. Time. You might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can try and answer any questions you may have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business. Bad for everyone. I suppose. It does kind of look like you live in there. Right. He doesn't know anything. All right, well, that's all I've got. The pawnbroker's gaze is already fixed on the dancing colors. Well, I have other business to, to, to take care of now, so uh, you take her easy. We lost a little money getting some sunglasses, but we gained a little money by stealing a dock worker's ID. We had more than when you got the sunglasses. We got 17 bucks. We're looking pretty good. We could get a lot more, though, and I think we can, but let's see. Where to head to next? I think we can look at the body again. Let's employ a little bit of save scumming to make sure we get what we need to get here. Okay, so. Here we are at the Stop throwing rocks at the- mm. Kuno! Alright, quick save. I'll go ahead and put a point into- I think it was- oh, What was it? Can we pick up rocks and throw them at Kuno? No. Wait, which was it? Was it Inland Empire? Yeah. The man before you is naked, but Inland a pair Empire. of underwear. Okay. Let's talk the to this feller. Is naked, but a pair of underpants and white boots. Hey! Where have you gone? Into the wild pile yonder. In the path. Way out in the wind. I can see you're gone, but who are you? I'm a joke. Look at me. 
There's nothing funny about you. There's nothing funny about you. There is nothing funny about John Zorba. Whoa. That... That's... No. That's Who not true. That's not about? true. Jokes are meant to be funny. What do you... What do you know? You're dead! Who were you when you were alive? A killer. Uh, I have another question for you. Go ahead, Papa. What is happening? What do you mean? I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Imagination. Oh, shit. Okay, SpongeBob. Ask me more questions. Do you fucking love questions? I do... I why do I love questions? I hate so you, you stink, and you're boring. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. <laughs> A baby afflicted with Harlequinism. You sure are good at that one? Completely. <laughs> Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copperoni. Look at all of them go. Do you want Yeah, more give me more questions. questions. Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Is my name Rooney? Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. Alright, Rooney is obviously not who I am. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. I feel like I've been getting a lot yeah. of I've been getting a lot of Harry lately. You might be onto something there. All right, so Harry, we know, is somewhat partly true. There's a Who lot of things you? pointing to that. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible, though? Because you have. Oh. Uh. Well, who killed you? Crafted me and Brother Coco. It was love all along. Uh, can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face, motionless. Looking into my eyes, standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? Uh, maybe this will lead to something? Something indescribable, unforeseen, miraculous? <sighs> huh. Something Weird. is on its way. Something hidden. It's coming. A miracle from the northwest and it's almost here you can feel it in the air on your hands the cold spring air smoothing them over oh hmm enough come back later Corpo. okay Use yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features if possible also so as you can see, sometimes the dialogue doesn't match what the text says. Well, like, didn't he just say Harley Quinn in French? No, no, like, just, just sometimes the words don't match up. I mean, it says, like, roughly the same thing, essentially, but don't worry about it. All right, preliminary examination's done. Let's get him down from there. Hmm. The steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters. But I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. He doesn't uh, actually think the challenge is unique. He thinks it's frustrating, annoying, and harder than he thought. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, I can't there's just put a, a ladder up there. The airship strength material. Can't someone else do it? Someone else? You mean like the police? What was no. that about processing then? Weren't they supposed to take care of the boots? Why don't they help? Can't the boys from processing take care of this? No. No. Why? Think of the boys from processing as murderers. Only instead of people, the murder crime scene. Processing is a wrecking crew. Oh. Of item and how to work in right. What? Okay. okay. Yeah, because, you know, we're here to delicately analyze as much as we can from this crime scene. 
and if we get processing in here, they'll like stomp everything and set up tents and you know just you know, st you know salt the earth and it's like got the body, all right, just yank off the head, just, all right, yeah. They're they're not doing the autopsy. We are. I know it's hard, but I assure you, the others won't come to help us, and we have Florian Cemetery confirmed here. We need to get him down fast. We could saw the branch. Maybe. Climb up there and saw the branch. Yeah, it seems dangerous. There has to be a less risky way. With less falling down. Maybe we can ask for help from the harbor. I was really hoping we wouldn't. The union appeared to be suspect in this case. Well, so yeah, they'd probably... No, leave him there. He's a piece of shit. What? I would really prefer if there was another way. These people might have an agenda. Yeah, let's, let's reconsider. But what other options? A corpse twists on the belt. Like chicken. Shoot him down. Skewer. Maybe we could shoot him down. Yeah, bang bang, come on, pig, shoot his head off. Oh. With the buckle ties the rope to the branch. Oh. That's a good spot to aim. There, the buckle holds the belt together. Where? Ah, yes, I see. If the shot hits that, there might be a chance to release the belt. Oh, yeah. fucking shoot him! We're talking, entertain the cooler with some shit. <laughs> Say nothing. Let him choose. Silence. With his elbow sharp, the lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a light red firearm. Yeah, he do it. A paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. That's a Kiel A1990 Ooh. armistice, mass produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fellow Steth's position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on Easy the Easy does it, partner. Shoot that motherfucker down. The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A you stink, Kim. Come on, it ain't that hard. All the times I've done this, guy never makes a shot. God damn it. God damn it! <laughs> Look at things are wrong with that shot. The fellow steps with the wrong choice. His shoulders are raised, but above all, he cannot trust his eyesight. <laughs> Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? Try again. No, we are lucky as it is. We didn't break anything. And the victim remains uncompromised. Oh my god, Kim. Give me the gun, I will do Any it for you. Could put us in an unfortunate position. <sighs> we have eyes. God damn it, get your shit together. Do any with that. Say that. Alright, what now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down with all the assistance. You know, you don't feel like too bad of a shot yourself. That's it, we have to get help from the harbor. I'm gonna just have another look at him. Okay, leave. This is where I do another quick save because we're getting that motherfucker down. Yeah? Yeah, we are. The man before you is naked. We need to talk about getting him down again. Yes, we do. I can try to shoot him down myself. Yeah. It's bad as it is. That's shooting firearms like I'm going to need your gun. Go ahead. I'm not stopping you. But just don't hit the victim. I'm going to need your gun for this, though. They only have one gun. Oops. They only have one gun. This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Officer, why do we only have one gun? I remember Where's what I told you. your gun? He used it. We're asking him for his gun. We used it already? Or are you talking about where our gun is? Yeah, where is our gun? Good question. Where's our badge? Where's, where's our, our Where's gun? our badge? Where's our gun? Where's our life? Remember when I told you I didn't have my badge or uniform with me when I woke up? I didn't have my gun either. That is even more unfortunate than the badge. Yeah. You need to contact your station about it as soon as possible. Try not to lose this one, please. Okay. The fuck is a banani poika? Well, you know, whatever. Not not important. Let's feel the weight of the curse. The piece of bakelite and gun yeah. metal is surprisingly okay. light. Your fingers fit right of course, it's kind of a gun. Card. Easy to use. Easy to hold. I could probably get this to work. Yeah. You've held this. An A9 
Thomas to uh, it feels people. familiar. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable. Like you never laid it down. Yeah, hello, darling. <laughs> The buckle comes okay. into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground, and your left hand... Firmly, I said. You're kind of bouncing on me there, buddy. Really? Boing, boing, I thought he was sinking boing. for a second. But the mud sinks down, and your boot gets caught. Why don't you just shoot yourself in your uh, mouth? At least you won't miss. Okay, let's close the left eye. Point the gun at her. <laughs> That's a bad move. The yeah. Boot slowly moves. Becoming entirely two-dimensional. Not only that, like, Kuno S hates it, Kuno hates it, and Kim hates it. Slowly rotates. And it kind of fucks you later on later checks because you threaten them. Right. You gotta, you gotta stay cool! We gotta be a cool superstar cop! The slow super movement of the branch in the wind, and your shoulders direct and the guns sink up. Dancing hypnotically. Okay. Just shoot the thing! Do it. Do it. Yes. Yeah! The buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you. Who killed you? Trapped within itself. Who killed you? Communism. It takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from. Only that it's right. Then the rigor in his muscles. Good. He smashes sideways into the spring. God, he felt like Peter Griffin. Getting out a horrid stench. How did I do that? By being a damn good shot. Ace is high. Hell yeah! Look, he wants to give you a high five. The system invented by the Aerostatic Brigade He's bouncing too. during the revolution is used to celebrate success in Revachon, especially in sports. The gesture is spread across the world, despite the defeat of the revolutionaries themselves. You could add an ace's low to it if you Ooh, like. Yeah. By Slap and wait for an ace low. Ace is low. Ace is high. Ace is low. Yes. That's how it's going. Let's go, buddy. Ace is high. The high arrives with a sharp slap. As you turn around, there is a moment of doubt. Feels like that low ain't gonna connect. Chill. It's gonna connect. But then it does. Yeah! Precision. The lieutenant is not one to leave an ace's low hanging. You do not leave an ace's yes. low hanging. Yes. That's not funny, that's a dirty word. What now? We will perform a field autopsy <laughs> and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilation here. Just a little Give him back his gun. Wait, field autopsy? Yes. The four phases of a murder scene. One, investigation of the scene. I can't say I'm fully satisfied with that part. We should search for prints, maybe. Two, initial examination of the victim. We were exhaustive in our efforts there. Good job. Booyah! Three, field autopsy. This will not be pleasant or easy, and it will have to be performed on the scene. Basically, uh, yeah, it's been seven days. I think it's good to see what we can get before anything gets any worse. Yep. Or when processing comes and just throws the body into the back of a FedEx truck and then off they go. The fuck is they on about? Oh! <laughs> Nice uh, voice crack there. Right. What the fuck are they on about? Four and final, transport of the coroner's case to the district mall. I'll do that. God, he stinks. God, he stinks, really. Do we have someone else with the autopsy? Like a doctor? No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies That's our not... ability to handle the entire incident chain. From crime scene okay. to clean up, we do it all. Uh, yes, yes, sir. I feel like a detective. Your station would not have assigned you the case otherwise. This case is important. 
Right. Super cop, right? Superstar cop. Super car. All right. Yeah. All right. Super here, you, here you go. In the meantime, we should try to interview Edward Flair, the leader of the union. Harbor property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbor just east of here. Feeding in might prove a challenge, though. Or we could talk to the representative of the logistics company again. I know we already met Joy, but that didn't count as an interview. We need to ask her how the strike and the engine are connected. You could ask the garden for directions. Wait, is this the famous list of initial interviews? Yes. Ooh. And those were the interviewees. Let's go. Hell yeah. All right. So we Let's can, get out of here, Kuno. So we can come and uh, do this autopsy whenever we want, but this is the chance we can go and get some extra clues. And frankly, I need to see... Yeah, I need to get something real quick before we start this autopsy thing. And to do that, we're going to head into the Whirling in Rags. Talk to this lady. Get the oh, that lady, yes. Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? Who, who's sweetie? Why, you are, officer. Hmm. Maybe I am. Maybe I am. And have you found anyone to be sweet to? I don't, I don't know. know. Maybe I have. Maybe I have. You rascal. That's normal. Sorry. Okay over there? <laughs> yeah. Are you all right over there? Oh, yeah, fine. Let's just, it's just always, you know, ooh, it's actually a little less black than normal. <laughs> you must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained I completely forgot to introduce myself oh I'm Lena my husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street but I come here for tea when they're away this Lena is wacky enough for the motley crew hire her on the spot yes I'd like to roll with me whatever do you mean I want you to be my wheelchair partner in fighting crime, helping me, helping people catching sequence, sequence killers. Killer. Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner I mean... who needs you to get back to helping the people of Martinez. Kim, of course, of course. D I, I, I know, I know, but there are also side mysteries, sequence killers and forays and the paranatural. I can assure you with absolute certainty, there are no sequence killings taking place in Martinez. You don't know that? Now, gentlemen, no need to squabble. I wouldn't be of much use to you anyway, sweetie. Oh, why? Three cards are better than two. Thank you, but Martinez isn't the most wheelchair accessible place, you see. I'd slow you down. Perhaps another time. You know what? I think uh, maybe someday we'll get you on our side. Well, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, I don't know where I am or what I'm doing or, like, anything. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Did like he... Stunt fox. Was one of the things... But surely things uh, does Sweetie that need bad. money? <laughs> does Sweetie get some money? Yes, you can beg her for money. Oh, I drank so hard I, li I forgot literally everything. Oh, my. You know where we are, right? Uh, the Whirling and Rags Cafeteria. It was on my keys. That's right. And where is the Whirling and Rags Cafeteria itself located? In Revishal. In Revishal? Yes. Indeed. We are in the fine city of Revishol. Mm-hmm, okay. Yes, and Revishol? Honestly, I didn't know Deadly Squad about Revishol. What kind of place is this? How would I even begin to tell you? Revishol is the most beautiful city in the world. Uh, it's not what I'm here, seeing outside, I? but okay. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but... Oh, they're better than this, I believe. So, Revishol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better Look, days. Look, it's so crappy. They have they, they barely painted over everything. Yeah. Speaking of history, you know what year it is. It's yeah? the spring of 51. That's right, dear. How splendid. Here. A green ape pen. Knowledge should always be What's rewarded. This? You remember when we got our, uh, our ledger and we found those case file papers and we were going to, you know, uh, start, start a new case file? And, we and all we had was pen. this tiny little crappy little nub, er, pencil. nub pencil, 
And we're like, Kim, can we have a pen? And he's, he's like, like, no. He, he, he said no in every way but the word itself. So now we have a pen of our own, and now things will start looking really super nice. Yay! And he won't resent us for it. Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you then. But now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask you one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? So you can, like, answer as great as you can on all these other questions. And she's like, oh, okay. Well, I guess it's not that bad. But then we get to this line of questioning. Okay, what kind of government do we have? And, well, that's a really complicated answer that we don't have the answer to yeah. right now. That's like, oh my. Oh dear. Oh jeez. See, watch. Uh, what you, so, uh, what kind of government do you think we have? So we got uh, democracy, dictatorship of the proletariat, uh, fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds, uh, governed by intelligent machines uh, that perform calculations to determine the freest market, uh, radios being used to control people's minds, and then the cop regime. What are you, these are all wrong, but go ahead and choose one. Cop regime. Cop. We are living under the cop regime. Actually, we are not. You could say that about almost any other nation, but not Revishal. Try one more time, officer. What mode of government? Go up, uh... Oh, three. Our leaders are fierce warriors who traverse the plains on steeds. Civilization cowers before us. Yes. Oh, no. Nothing like that, dear. Revishal is a zone of control, led by an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have almost no government of our own, and certainly not one who's horseback. How are there cops, then? Oh, dear. This is troubling. You really ought to know that, being one yourself. There aren't any cops in Revishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law. She's lost all of her. A complicated matter since the revolution. She, like all confidence in her in us has dwindled from her now. But Corey. we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. You just She's did. Scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. Like she's scared now. It says so it's like i just had retrograde amnesia oh really how bad is it you know what year it is uh it's uh 2023 okay do you know where you live uh yes i live in the united states of america okay well what kind of government do we have uh, uh feudalism oh dear oh god oh my <laughs> oh god we gotta take you to a hospital right now so how did i do you didn't do too well dear Ooh. Hobocop breakthrough! We're about to become Hobocop! Hobocop! Like you're having trouble remembering things. History and places. Reality in a word. It's very odd. You're odd. Aside, you're odd. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs. And while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary. So I, I wouldn't worry too much. Who could tell me more? Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask- What? No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. I won't be your guide either. Thanks, Kim. Thanks, Kim, really. Glad you could help me out. I mean, this might be, uh... This might be, uh, you know, relative to the case, but, you know, okay. Of course. Then, I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Ooh, I know a good rich oh, person. We can talk to Joyce. You would find a wealthy oh, yes. person in Martinez. That's a good point. That's the lady on the boat, this right? Yes. Yeah. Sweetie needs money. Do sweeties get money? Oh, sweetie, <laughs> I heard your conversation with the manager about your financial troubles. When do you get your next We cannot check? suggest anything. We have a suggestion ranking of a zero. Tug on her heartstring. Right, let's change the subject. Right, let's change the subject. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. I don't have money for you. If there's anything else I can do for you, just ask. I've got to get going now. Good luck with your case. Hobocop. Hobo cop. Yes. I wouldn't be a cop anymore, but a hobo. That would mean game over for the cop chapter of your adventures. But who knows where the hobo part takes you? To the bar, the old Lassamoire, 
to the pier or the sewers to Le Royale, where for 300 years they interred the dead. You could plunder royalist crypts for long forgotten triple malt. Hey. Water. Then fight the Arunakan beast that lurks the bottommost sepulchers. The secrets of the city are all yours at last. Hell yeah. That sounds way better than being a cop. Fuck yeah. Right. So I reveal extra special collector's edition terror bottles on uh, tear bottles on the map. We get more money from selling tear and the shivers slurring cap has been raised. Well, that's cool if we had a bag though. We need a bag, yeah. We need a bag to collect tear to sell and we can get more from that. So we need a bag now. Don't we get it from the library? I thought. The library? Yeah. There's the, the bookstore I meant, not the library. There's no library, but there's a bookstore. But yeah. I mean, I want to use my hobo cop powers. Cause like these these trash cans sometimes have tear in them. Hello. Talk to her, yeah. Ooh, focus out man from hidden doll in the wildfire. What's this other thought? The book appears to be erotica, but without actual erotica. Weird. Oh, it must okay. be it must be Fifty Shades of Grey. Ha <laughs> ha! Hello, sir. Step back uh. in. The store is open. Find the law. I know, sir. Are you interested in a new and exciting book? What kind of store is this, anyway? It's a bookstore, sir. We sell books, postcards, and some board games. It's called Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Well, yep, looking on the side yep. over there. Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. Yeah, okay. Books, postcards, easy. Even a kid would know all of this. Nah, it feels inappropriate to lecture this girl. <laughs> or we I know what a book is, jeez. <laughs> well, 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 where do you want to go, huh? Nah, it feels inappropriate. <laughs> Don't be a fool. As an expert, it's your duty to tell what you know to everyone. Hey, now, I already made up my mind. Sir? Yeah? Are you okay? You've been standing here silently for a while now. Uh, is it okay if I ask you some questions? So he's literally just standing there, just... Right, talking to himself and shit. Oh, I've got no more. I'm not going to lecture the little girl. Sir, sir. All right, uh, can I ask you some questions? Okay, sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mum, her name is Plaisance. She owns the store. She's inside minding the register or organizing the stock. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out in here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. I should have a word with the store owner, maybe? Oh, no, no, sir. I'm happy to help Mum by luring in customers. Besides... Shouldn't have you be in school? To keep warm. Yeah, good question. I do my studies at home at the moment. I have to help Mum keep this place running. <laughs> I'll try to answer as best as I can. What's your name? Uh, uh, uh. I don't remember. <laughs> School is stupid. Boy, boy, don't ask Cole Phelps to interview her. It's like, what's your name? Did you fucking do it? <laughs> Did you hang the man? Isn't going to school more important than this? Mom says it's necessary to do both because it builds character. Mom says a proper way Ah, uh, yes, a job at nine. Builds character. Gotta love all of that. Motherfucking child labor! There is stress and unease behind these words. She's reciting etiquette. How's the business going? Mom says it's peachy. She was a little peachy. There was talk about this house being cursed. Behind her, the window has been boarded up. You sense the boards creaking, twisting for a second. In some kind of doubt. Cursed. In, tense shoulders. in what way? Cursed in the way that makes them say that no business has ever really thrived here, sir. That they all go. Bankrupt? Bankrupt. Exactly. But we've been doing fine so far. So, uh, this leads to a side quest. We can either like. be like, curse, no, there's no way that there's a curse. This is ridiculous, there's no curse. Or we can go, yes, the curse. This sound, I know, this sounds rather serious. Sounds rather serious. I should probably look into this. 
We can go into the bookstore and ask This might annoy him. Kim though. <laughs> but I don't see much more to look into here. <laughs> yes. Please do also look at our wares inside. The postcards and board games are there, sir. What do you know about the other failed businesses? Nothing really, sir. Mum doesn't allow me to sneak around in the back rooms or the cellar. I don't really know what's there. How does this curse manifest itself? It does not manifest itself in any way. It does not exist. I liked it better when we were talking about whether it's appropriate to stand out in the freezing weather. <laughs> but Kim, the plasmic manifestations! Yes! No such thing. Oh. Uh, anything else you wanted to talk about, sir? <laughs> Enough about this curse for now. Maybe I can tell you about some of our books instead. What is this crime business? Crime fiction is about murders or burglaries or things like that. And the work of a policeman or a private detective who's trying to solve crime and catch the criminals. Crime murder gets the people going. Okay, I got it. Crime murder gets the people going. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's kind of like a puzzle, mm -hmm, too. Mm -hmm. You can guess who the criminal is or how the good guys are going to catch him. What I like is that there's a special dialogue option because we said, I am the law to her. I'm a policeman myself, by the way. The law, as I said. You don't look much like a policeman. Oh. Okay. Oh, uh, well, what does a cop look like then? Didn't mean to offend, sir. Sorry, sir. It's just that you don't look like Dick Mullen. Dick Mullen. Uh. Oh, she points to a book cover on which you see a strapping Vespertine officer. Oh, Dick Mullen. He must be some kind of, like, Encyclopedia Brown or Hardy Boys but Singular Guy kind of person, you know? Solves crimes, you yeah. know. Uh, uh, yeah, do you, you think we were like him? I mean, we solved a lot of crimes. You think we're as good as him? Used to be. You know, nobody actually looks like the guy. That's just a stupid fantasy of a man. She looks at Dick Mullen, frowning. <laughs> he isn't even drawn right. He isn't even drawn right. That's not how human shoulders work. The perspective is all wrong. She examines the picture. Trying to find whatever is wrong with it. She then shrugs and puts the book aside. That's just no way to cop. I can do it way better than Dick Mullen. Sure you can, sir. He's just a fictional character. He'll be no match for you. Yeah, see? Damn, she's got me there. Maybe you can show me some real police work, sir. Like in the book. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, let's, uh, let's talk more about books. I like talking about books with you. What about, what, what is romance? It's the type of book where there's a rich lady and she has to choose between the good man and the bad man. What kind of romance is that? Or there could be a story about a poor lady getting a rich man. What? what about man and lady business, sir? What about a poor man getting a rich lady? It happens, but usually the guy gets rich in the process. Or should actually be rich himself, but has lost his family property unjustly. Like during the revolution or something. I see. Aww. Those are unhappy books for most of the pages. People sad about what they have lost. But then it all turns out just fine in the end. What about when both of the men are bad? These are not very common. You can't have a choice between bad and bad. Nobody wants to read a story like that. What if it's written really well? I do. Maybe then. Like maybe it's about choosing the lesser of two evils. Maybe it's about uh, fixing the lesser man. Maybe it's about yeah. how honesty is. Maybe yeah. maybe it's about the one of the bad men wanting to change. Oh, well then, that means he's the good man. It's always a good and a bad man. About, Damn it, the bitch has got me again. What about when what everyone's poor? What about when everyone's poor? Everyone's poor! That's really not a proper romance story. That's more like everyday life. Well, sometimes you have to write about real life things. Not in romance books, sir. You yes, ha! Huh? In romance. You don't know anything, in Annette. In the end. What about a book where the men and lady business up. don't work out at all? I haven't read many of those. Maybe you should ask Mum. Yeah, you think she has one about an excruciatingly painful breakup? Yeah. I think it's a romance story if the main characters break up, though. No, 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 think about because it. Because the romance came first, so it's romance. No, no, think about it. One where they plunge into a torrid spiral of pain and recremation, only it's really long and drawn out. Scarred for life. Phantom limb! Um, no, I don't know. Does it ring a bell? All right, I'll ask your mom. Yes, she knows books. Definitely. What was that? An idea for an unfinished novel. 
Well, Absolutely, yes. Well, if it, if it was in the back of my brain, it's going to come to the forefront now. Later, when you get the chance, you should address these issues by getting drunk. That'll show them. Would you shut up, Electrochemistry? You got me into this mess. That's enough romance for me. I had other questions. About like about uh, famous people? Oh, kings and queens and generals of old, or artists and writers, or musicians, those kinds of people. There's usually something extraordinary about them. I, I hate that word. Extraordinary. Yeah? Like, extra... Like, extraordinary means like, you know, wow, incredible, fantastic. But when you, when you break it down, extraordinary. Which means it's extra typical, boring, yeah. normal, ordinary. I don't get it. I hate that word. Stop using it, Annette. I'm the law. If you say extraordinary again, I'll fucking arrest you. <laughs> I think that's why people read them. To find the secrets of their fame. Seems like most people who read those books fail to get more famous from reading them. Reading those doesn't make the readers more famous, does it? But it does make the famous people more famous. Yeah. Fame sounds delicious. Maybe someone will write a book about me one day. Why would they do that, sir? Because I'll be a superstar cop in the papers and everything. That'll show them. Maybe they'll make you a book cover picture and everything. Tell yeah! Crazy, holding yeah. Down. I don't trust that, though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my typical safe scumming because I have no confidence in myself as a gamer. It's 83! Like and watch us fail. Alright, I'm going to deduce something now. The girl keeps her hands folded, hidden. Why is that? Hey, why do you keep your hands folded? You can you'd, show them to me. You can show them to me. She looks around anxiously. Her hands remain folded in front of her. She doesn't want to show them. The lieutenant stands by, looking at the two of you with little interest. It's okay. She brings out her reddened hands. Her nails frayed, nearly chewed down to the flesh. You bite your nails. And you knew this from me keeping my hands folded? Yes. Well, yes. That proves nothing. Anyone could do an easy deduction like that. One more? Bet I can figure out why you bite your nails. I got a few reasons in mind. Yeah. She half provocative, half enthusiastic. You're uptight because of your mother and the pressure she's putting on you. Maybe so, sir. Okay, I know it's a bad habit, and I shouldn't. I hope this entertained you. It was okay, sir. There's more that can be achieved here. Ask her to do the same. You think so? Fine, do better. To do something about me. You're quite sober. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Comment. He does not flinch even a single bit. He is intensely not flinching. It takes effort. I'm also sad and my head hurts. Yeah, how do you know I'm usually not? Because you usually aren't. Well, I'm also sad and my head hurts. I'm sorry, sir. I hope things get better soon. You know, thank you, Annette. There she stands, swaying on her feet, assaulted by the early spring breeze. She smiles at you. The whole situation suddenly feels familiar. Somehow, there's something you're missing. What are you missing here? Why does this feel familiar? Can we try and save scum just once? It's just to see eight percent. I don't think so. Anything's possible. Uh, but you didn't uh, believe the eighty-two. You know we roll it. Oh! oh! That was such a good roll. Holy Ooh. shit! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! All right. Um. So. You know me. I can't believe you rolled a twelve. We've met before, yeah. Uh, because it's a it's a two d six system. Uh, rolling snake eyes is basically rolling a one. Well, yeah. You'll always fail no matter what. And rolling double sixes is, of yeah. course, a crit, a twenty. So we couldn't have rolled better than that. Fuck yeah! All right. <laughs> all right. So you you know me. We met before. Yes, I stand in this spot all the time. Oh. Your shirt on, sir. Telling people about being a star. Uh. I don't really understand who those stars are. 
Well, all right. We're wearing a shirt. Already improvement. Did I ever talk to you? Of course. You stopped by a few times. You certainly look better than the last time I saw you. <sighs> Thanks. I'm trying. <laughs> I look yeah, like shit. I can see. You don't have party eyes anymore. Party, party eyes? Yes, of course. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, wait. Uh, Fucking party pa eyes. Pa 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 party, pa party eyes? You know, like a cat in the dark. Or big and wide eyes. <laughs> it certainly looks odd on a map. Uh, so, you're telling me... I mean, it's the middle of the day when the shop's open. I, I had my shirt off. And just wide eye, like, ah, high on whatever the fuck. Fucking, just, like, on whoo! TCP or something, really running around. You know, even though I've, I've acted like shit today, I think that we have done better in these few hours we've been awake than the past four days. We have made a 250% improvement on our life, so we're doing pretty good, I'd say. The swiveling eyes of the loony drug addict. That is what she meant. You were probably good at too. Mm. Fuck yeah. You should get some party eyes right now. <laughs> Always wanting the drugs. Does that mean I've Fuck been yeah. partaking in narcotics? Oh, baby, that's not what you have to worry about. Worry about the important thing. So why didn't you tell me you knew me to begin with? I didn't know I had to do that. Well, thanks. Thanks. I've learned something about myself today. I'm glad I could help you, sir. All right. You've been a real trooper, Annette. I'm going to save you. Because she's stuck out here in the cold. I mean, it's terrible. You know, girl it's horrible, her, really. Girl her age, you know, biting her nails. Her nose is red from the cold. She should be in school. This, Yeah, she should be in school. This little darling should not be out here doing what she is. You know, she gave a man like me hope. I need to protect her. You! Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Playtom. The mother... Before okay. we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there wouldn't be an opportune moment to ask later. Sir, don't be ridiculous. I certainly will not give you money. I would be doing you a great... Why are you asking for this stranger's money? One has to earn one's success, even if one is a police officer. Handouts are nothing but manipulation. All they do is make you dependent. I could arrest you. Certainly there are good things to be said about dependence. <laughs> I am a powerful feudal lord. <laughs> Demand tribute. Is this about traditions? Okay. Now, hey there. Sounds like someone isn't taking responsibility for the energy they bring into the Tribute. <laughs> Power. These are not the traditions we're used to in this part of the world. Nah, that didn't work. So are you the, are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Annette, yes. My daughter. I hope she wasn't slacking off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell oh, me, God. Is she at her post doing her job like a proper girl? Yes, of course. Wonderful. Did you talk to her? Yes. Great. On a scale of one to ten, how compelled were you to buy books after talking with her? I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Come now. It's not personal. It's about... It is! I expect an answer. <sighs> Ten. She's certainly very polite and helpful. My precious. Her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, yeah. sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or anyone's business. Come on, Ken, back me up. This is wrong, uh, right? This has got to be wrong. No. It is my business because I'm the law. All this pressure has made her really anxious. You know she's been chewing her nails. God, I've told her not to do that. It's disgusting. And I told you to mind oh your own business. Oh my god. Clearly you have no idea how hard it is to raise a girl in this economy. This economy is a mysterious force. Like cosmic weather. Mysterious and harsh. I don't think she can do anything about it. She can if she has enough willpower. This is what's called growing pain. Life isn't easy. Life doesn't give breaks. Come on, ma'am. It's obvious she can't do anything about it. You are placing an unnecessary burden on a young child. 
Yeah, what you're doing is wrong. Even I know that, and I don't usually know anything. She stands still and severe, silently fuming. Ten or so seconds pass without change. She's looking for one, but there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. No shit. They're just that's you know that's there's there's a lot of wise words in this game, and I think one of them is uh, there simply aren't any good arguments for being an asshole. Love that. Oh no. Hold on. I need to invite her inside and apologize. She must be freezing out there. There you go. There's that maternal instinct. There. I don't know what to say to you. My husband, he tries to teach me business lessons. I have what my mother called a dull mind. All this stress. Is his husband Annette's father? Yes. My husband is a successful entrepreneur east of the river. If only he were more involved in the business we're running up here. No matter. So you're not even together? What's Grand Coral? It's the proper place to live. One of the most peaceful neighborhoods east of Jamrock. You may know it for its massive housing projects. Most of the buildings are empty at the moment. It's a great opportunity to get ahead of the crowd. Better times ahead for sure. And your husband's also involved with the bookstore? He made the initial investment. Since then, he's been what you might call a silent partner. Uh huh. Uh huh. Super silent. Almost in order. She told me she doesn't go to school anymore. She's been too busy helping me here. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, that's not okay, lady. Temporary solution, of course. Kim! Kim! Really? Kim! Kim! Do something! And hell freezes over. Never mind. It's not a good topic to get into. Alright, I had something else in mind. Looks aloof. Farewell for now, book peddler! And Annette has been brought into the store reading a book. Well, she was reading a book. Now she's kind of just sitting there. I'm sorry. I'm very busy with my homework. I have so much homework now. Uh. Out of the rain and into the How? Bed. If you don't go to school. What are you doing now? Oh, homeschool. What are you doing now? Math. It's really difficult. Like, really. They say you need it to get rich. Better than standing outside in the cold, I guess. Oh, oh, I found something while you were away. What is it? I thought this would fit you. Oh. Well, thanks for helping me <laughs> It's... It's a hat. It's a fucking it's, hat. It's like a Sherlock Holmes, Indiana Jones type hat. A detective hat. hat. A detective hat? Yes, just like the one Dick Miller wears all the time. You'll look way more serious with that. Right. Yes. I have to get back to my homework now. Before Mum notices. Nah. This is hard. You can do it, kiddo. I believe in you. You, don't, you want to know why I believe in you? Because you believed in me. And yep. nobody believes in me. Not even, like... Not even Kim. Not even most of the people in my brain believe in me. Right. S suggestion? Oh, no way. You have no charm whatsoever. Empathy? You don't give a shit about anybody but yourself. Authority? <laughs> what authority? <laughs> anyway, well, what I can do is I can put on this hat. Now I have even more encyclopedic book smarts. That's like an Indiana Jones hat. No, it's a Dick Mullen hat. The game is a hand. Right? <laughs> Ooh, what's back here? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking Ooh. the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Shopkeeper! I'm sorry, the back room? Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Nothing. Why aren't you browsing the books? Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? You ought to. A little busy to book read, ma'am. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from Examine the, curtains, the strange cage like trinkets. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron. Assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Uh, this is a traditional why do you have this here? Ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. 
And who are the Seminis? Inhabitants of Ilifenton, the Seminine Islands down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, pull open the curtain. There's nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. Not for long! Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, don't touch that. I told you it's off limits to the customers. Well, I'm not a customer, I'm a cop. Now, psychologically speaking, we're done to decide to open them. I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? This is about the curse, isn't it? That's why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for the employees, I told you. Now please step away from the curtains. Man, but I sense. Man, but I sense. I'm a police officer. I need, I need to get in there, okay? Why? It's not like anyone was killed there. I'm sorry. I don't uh, know. Oh. Please don't go there. I can't allow that. You'll only make things worse and unleash the powers. The curtains do seem frail suddenly. Not robust enough to contain this. I stuff. sense. But I sense this place calling for me. I must investigate beyond the threshold. You do? My God, even more reasons not to mess with the curtains. Just step away, dear sir. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. No. Please just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. No there way. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. The curtains, tattered with age and covered in dust. Fine. I will give you one Where last chance. I will give you one last chance to plead your case. And if you don't convince me, I'm opening those curtains. Talk. Hello again, esteemed officer. Why are you so upset about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you. It's just a storage room for employees. Then show me. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. I'll have you know, I'm borderline illiterate. She recites it like it's a poem, or like she's playing a role she's grown tired of. She's so tense, it's a miracle she hasn't stepped in half yet. If it's just a storage room, then why are you so tense? I'm not tense, I'm just... Okay, fine. It's just because this place is cursed, just like everyone says. They don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. The doomed commercial area. So it's not just your bookstore, it's everywhere? Mm-hmm. Are you happy now, officer? Happy that you've ruined everything? Ruined everything? Says you. Why didn't you just tell me about this right away? It's the curse. It's not good to talk about the curse. Not in detail. The negativism. It's dangerous. Talking about the void wraiths angers them. The wow. void wraiths. Void wraiths. <laughs> You have new words. Have you sought help from anyone? Yes. I contacted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Simonese mediators. Uh, they provided geez. me with the ward. The wards help to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it's not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Oh, this. No, it's a special Hymian amulet. Uh-huh. Uh. With a spell of compulsion, it's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with a different inducement spell, for example. It's so you're trying to make people spell. buy books because they won't? She, she's using alchemy to try and get people to buy more books? Uh-huh. Sorcery! Witch! Burn her! That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Yeah, how does the curse it, it manifest does. itself? So how, how does it manifest itself? The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease eating at the very foundation. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. Didn't, what? Didn't that curtain just move? Huh. <sighs> Wait, that's it? I was hoping for something more paranatural. But officer, there's 
nothing natural about entire companies declaring bankruptcy. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to <laughs> stop you right there. <laughs> and disappointing income statements. There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since I arrived, I've sensed an eerie lingering presence. As if I was unwanted here. Would you like me to take the case? I can investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone uh, familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Oh my god, lady, okay. Leave the spirit be. Annette, don't grow up to be your mother, okay? My lead, god, get her out of here. What this case calls for? A para detective. I gave smart ass parenting advice. <laughs> okay, well. Yes, I am a doom. I, 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 just, just let me into the area, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Show her what world class perfectly looks like. Okay. Obviously, we're gonna need to spin some kind of uh, story in order to get this yeah. bitch to cooperate because she's so deluded. Ma'am, I've come here to help. I've handled paranormal situations before. I sense the psychic emanations from afar. The sleeper beyond calls out. I'm not sure I can trust your claims. Honestly, you look like a bit of a drinker. I'm sorry for being so blunt, but... Hey, no, hey, hey, hey. You need the booze to focus. <laughs> All right, hey, 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 you need them drugs. Shut up, electrochemistry! I'm not talking to you right now! The lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all this? Here we go. Uh, your award. Void revenant. Your awards brought me here in the first place. The Semini's blood also runs through me. Or that? Well, I don't know. I it, like the second one better. I am the Void Revenant. I have the power to debad all the bad energies. I should have realized a pattern lies within the. Got her. Fate guides us. Our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. Perhaps you truly are the one to deliver this woman from the doom. But I am not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You are certain you can help her, keep her safe. I can't allow any collateral damage to hit. Just ask my partner Kim. He'll vouch for me. No problem. No, he will not. <laughs> no, he will not. Yeah, he doesn't. He's he is probably sitting there rolling his eyes without moving his eyes at all. <laughs> <laughs> but no problem whatsoever, ma'am. Your family is safe. The phantoms are no match for me. If you promise, good officer, then you might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. On my honor. Thank you, sir. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Ooh, the entity? Ooh. Do act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of, of course, course, the entity. The entity. <laughs> for I have sensed its presence. You have? The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch probably. I've suspected that she must be connected to the curse ever since I first saw her. Did you know that she lives inside the chimney? Chimney. The passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yep. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace, and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. You should go find the entity and ask what happened to all the companies in the building. What is the source of this curse? Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. See, when you lie to crazy people, they'll do anything you ask. Yep. And please do return to me after you've looked round. I'm quite anxious to know what she has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Well, farewell for now, book peddler. You're gonna go investigate this curse, I guess. But really, we're gonna go into a new area that has a lot of interesting stuff in there. See a set of tattered curtains. Yes, pu pull the damn curtains open. Now that we have permission. A room full of dusty furniture and trash. A door stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Sebanese walls. <laughs> Your shadow looming over it like an omen. Oh. Shut up. 
Well, here we are. Ooh. Oh my. I feel like we've uh, stumbled into the Spirit Hunter games or something. Well, we're going to take a quick 15 minute break before we head into here and see what sort of ghostly stuff is uh, happening in the back of the doomed commercial area. Back in a sec. All right. You ready? To go in the store? Yeah. It's time to dick mullin our way through this doomed commercial area. The heavy door with a missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens. Unlock the door with the key. Of after exerting yeah. some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door Open the door and enter. Don't be a coward. Open. Let's get in there. <coughs> into the room. Ooh. He's got something to say. What is this place? It's an adventure. No, it's a gym. Oh. Though it looks like no one's been here, Muji. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out of your bag before we move Do on. we? An yep. eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yeah. Yes, because it's closed. Oh, well, I mean... No! no. natural explanations, why a banal one may do. Now let's move on, shall we? Yeah, he is not on board with this curse business. But hey, it gets... Obviously. But hey, we're not in here to solve a curse. We're getting, We're in here to get some things. There's stuff around here. Like a punching bag. And a shot putt ball? Yoink. That's, that's gonna be worth some cash. Got some stairs here, but what else is in here? Ooh, here we go. A barbell lies on the floor. They look unsafe. The color has worn off its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum in the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. Lift them. Can I lift this? There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Jeez. Ooh. Why does it feel so familiar? Because I'm a weightlifter? Is that why it's familiar? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber. The squeaky sound of sneakers. Your bruised knee against the mat. And the whistle. Then the feeling is gone. Was I a wrestler? So gym a class? Memory, a memory from another life. When <coughs> you were young and fit. Well, look, Kim. There's no collars on the barbell. Yeah. All right. The weights may fall out. Better not touch it then. What kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of EPIS safety regulations. If the gym if was still operating. Still operating. Yeah. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. I don't think. Yeah, I I'm, don't think. I'm not going to, because I'm learning quickly that when you try and kick stuff or work with stuff, <clears throat> you're, it hurts you. You're gonna get hurt. All right, that's enough of this place. Let's head up the stairs. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, it's a little dank in here. Yeah, it's kind of dark. What's he want? It's dark, and the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Fair point, yes. <laughs> totally obvious, yes, right. yes. Now let's get to it. Some areas are inaccessible without your flashlight. After you've acquired it, go to your inventory and equip it in a held slot to continue exploring. See, our DM is uh, very particular about how much rope our characters have. Yeah. This DM is particular about what your character has in his hand at the time, because there's so many stats attached to it. So we have to actually put the flashlight in our hand, in Ooh. order to use it. Yeah, and there we go. Figured. All right, let's take a look around this doomed place. <clears throat> what do we got? Ooh. I mean, our DM would also do that. Like, I can't hold my knife and shoot my arrow at the same time. Well, that's just common sense. You don't have three. Like, I don't think your toes are that dexterous. How do I get in there? Over there. That's it. Yeah, go back the way you came. <clears throat> yeah, it's old window panes and debris. It's a whole bunch of broken windows. Okay. What in the world? 
is this place? Ooh. Oh! Money! Money! Uh-oh. Look, guys! It's a mannequin torso! Stand With no head! Stand back, Kim. We have a weapon of mass destruction right here. Yep. Best not to touch it. The mannequin torso is, me is known to tear off a man's flesh in only two hits. Ugh. Ugh. Huh, what's in here? Oh, our money! Guns! Oh man, I thought this was the, this was the doomed commercial area. I'm getting rich off of this place just, be just by yeah, being here. Yeah, why did she go back here? But where are the clothes used to display? Good point. What the? What's this thing? This appears to be some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer. Just sitting here without anyone inside. I heard Mannequin Torso defeat a Lavos. Yeah, yeah. I heard Mannequin Torso actually defeats the anti-piracy enemies that they put in games. What he means is that these things cost money. <clears throat> Why would anyone just leave it behind? This is the Ream Civic Radio Computer. Modern Ooh, RC a radio computer. Zero, Ooh. Equipped with a Feld mainframe and a Ream compatible printer. You think I should turn it on? Turn on. one of these down at the station, but I never really learned how to use it. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing a recent play of. Ooh, it's booting up. The hatch on the machine central. So it's a 3D printer. Open. Look inside the compartment. It's empty, like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left dangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go. Press print. Nothing happens. Oh. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Nothing happens. Oh, this okay. has no purpose at the moment. What's on here, though? Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some of the writing has faded with age. But you can still make Looks like a Tolkien character in the center there. How right you are! Pinned to the board. These live, pointy-eared creatures appear to be different types of Welkins. You make out autumnal candle Welkins, casting wax-based magic. Translucent Welkins, Ooh. with organs shining under their skin. And even ether Welkins, hailing from the vast emptiness of sidereal space. I Who love all them. Those creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind. You should adopt one of those Wilkins as your persona. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll use my persona. Come, Wilkin. Uh, Wilkin. <laughs> you'll face up. You'll own up. You'll reach out to the truth. <laughs> one of the Wilkins. You never them. saw it coming. It appears to be different, however. Examine the Welkin. This, this is, is important. important. It's Vara Hamira. Vara Hamira. His face white and scarred like cracked marble. This Ooh. is clearly uh, oh. a Welkin supremacist. The note says, all non-Welkin races will be purged. Oh, gosh. Uh-huh. The Haldor, the Tuorg, the humans, and even headless men. All of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. <laughs> uh. An inordinate amount of time has gone into drawing these little Welkin creatures. You know, though, I would love if there was a Persona 5 Disco Elysium crossover. If Utaba and Kim Kitsuragi interacting would be something glorious. <laughs> Okay. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think. Even if it's just for a game. <coughs> oh, yeah? Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like... I love the whisper. <laughs> One of them is a Wilkin supremacist. Like right in his ear. Yeah. Centimeters from his like face. almost touching what? his ear. One of them is a Wilkin supremacist. <laughs> That one 
has a great beard, too. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from the Welkins. <laughs> <laughs> what about these photos over here that are that are on the left side? The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees grown in under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds, abandoned in a storm. Animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. Well, it's a from software game, got you it. See really? Oileries built into glaciers, boreal dwarves, yurts under the snow, great mammoth like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cozy in its own way. Like eggnog. Oh god. Why is everything like drugs to you, man? Because that's what, that's the drug mind. A pinned postcard reads. The heat death scenario. A desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as Wiro becomes untethered from its sun, drifting through the universe. Let's check the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic oh, this is two years old then. Daily Minami and GPI span the marker drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Mm. Minami stands for a mini meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago. Keep, it, keep reading, what happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failure and regret dwell in this region. Mm. Ooh. Looks like they didn't make it. A note in the bottom left corner of the chalkboard says, See the prod schedule filament for details. And I guess there's notes here. The handwriting is only slightly <clears throat> legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out, we're all untethered, and heat death of the universe. Interesting. Anything else here? This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading over the That's stone a fucking like fireplace? on alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles Cadran mosaic tiles. The Hold on, how do I know what Cadran mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History classes, students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. Those aquarelles. I don't remember that shit. So I remembered something from third grade? What am I looking at? But I can't remember where I put my badge. Got it. UKV 123.6. UKV 123.7. UKV 123.9. Some written notes, too. Sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear. It looks like a cardiovascular system split into veins and capillaries. Very advanced. Of course. The anatomy of the curse. Perhaps. The web is comprised <laughs> of radio stations, all lead back to one red heart, titled the Game Master Frequency. A note says, this one can listen in on any station it wants. They must have had massive airwaves. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the, who, who's the Game Master? Someone very important. A conductor for the hundreds of story threads that pass The DM, you game mean? Master's frequency. If it's a game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. <laughs> the cost of air with alone must have been huge. Exactly. This schedule, I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. So I guess what this is... It doesn't even look like a fucking fireplace. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yeah, that is a question. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. Lay it on me, Kitsuragi. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only these people were trying to automate it. Make it work on radio computers. 
How are they planning on doing that? True Korean state. None of the players have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. So it's a role-playing game by two-way radio. Then there's the game. We play that every Friday. Listen in on the smallest Korean station. I think that was supposed to coordinate the story, functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. His fascination has swept aside other concerns for the moment. He's a little hooked. He, he, he wants to be part of this. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. And <clears throat> this was a role-playing game? Indeed. Those welcome are a dead giveaway. Yeah. The welcome people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the WiiWare board game with hit death thrown in. Super cool. Someone should give them millions of real immediately. This <laughs> right. too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule on the chalkboard. Then they ran out of money. <gasps> because of the curse, of course! Right. Wow. Indeed. It's ambitious and unfeathered from reality, but... The, the curse world, got him. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. Yes. Too late for that, I'm afraid. Oh. Okay. You're no Let's fun, Kim. I want to resurrect this, though. Come on, we could issue our. You're, you're too. You're too much of a cop to go along with this idea. Well, let's get out of here. Oh, there's more. What is this? Ooh, money. Oh, is it that fridge? Oh, is that what this is? You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. Oh god, are the we gonna die? <laughs> and the bear's eyes are that's, red. that's a good point. The whole time uh, we were holding up the flashlight to Kim right in his face the entire time. Yeah. Of course, he's probably used to it, the stone cold badass that Kim is. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. The lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light. Crack open the door. The There's even a handle. Belly door. A gust of <laughs> belly door. <laughs> to greet you. you hear a low grumble as the bear regulates itself. This is the inside of a refrigerator. The lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hand has found the holster of his gun. Look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name, Revachon Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Yoink. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. A friendly cartoon bear smiles back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What is a giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? In a bookstore? Good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. So they tried to sell ice cream from this hyper carnivore? <laughs> I know. What an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. It would be perfect for Coca-Cola. It would be perfect for, um... Um... <coughs> 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 Storing a body. Oh, yeah? The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. Yeah, well, that's one bill I'm not paying. Not my problem! Wait, what's this? What? A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace, coloring it pitch black. Looks like this furnace has a face. And it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? <clears throat> Looks like an old <laughs> Why is he screaming? This building. It's connected to the chimney. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire. Only Let's look inside. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke, smoke chamber, chamber upstairs. upstairs. What are you doing? I'm not sure, Kim, but I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, 
Really? <clears throat> you should investigate. See if someone's upstairs. <laughs> no. There's voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Please. But uh, Présence said it lived in the chimney. You're right. The rooms do look like they're connected. But malignant entities don't exist. At least not the supernatural kind. Of course not. Always has to be the skeptic, this man. Alright, let's yell. Ooh. <laughs> 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 You seem to have made no impression on whatever's Ugh, there. God. Oh, great. Okay. Then again, <laughs> maybe it's worth actually trying <laughs> something up there. Hmm. Maybe you should let your voice rest, officer. Good Try idea. I think I'll do that. Thank you, officer. I, I, thank you. I mean, lieutenant. Yeah. Sorry, lieutenant. Okay, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh, well. <clears throat> so, it looks to me that the doomed commercial area is just a whole bunch of failed businesses built on top of one another. Yeah. Why is this fridge plugged in? I bet you people are paying an arm and a leg. I know. It's still running somehow. Because it's Ooh. plugged in. Check it out. A hidden doorway. Is it? Yes. Shlink. Oh, shit. few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Where are There's we? There's a hole in the wall. Seems like an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all those rifles. Must be an old weapons cache. There's a hole in the wall. There is, yes. And there also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay, I do. Your hand reaches deep into darkness and spider webs. Rummaging around, you find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Are these any good? Most of them are rusty <laughs> and inoperable, like the rest. <clears throat> but one catches your eye. A bolt action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. That's a rare sight. Seems to no longer be functional, but still, a beautiful thing in its own way. What does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms. Leveled up! Still lying around in Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. It might come in useful in the future. So we uh, got an inoperable but nice looking rifle that we can sell for less than the uh, dock worker's ID. We can also sell this shot putt ball, but the game chastises me for wanting to sell it. To sell such beautiful old school sports equipment Why? would be a sin. Well, I certainly ain't no saint! Yeah, no. Not how we woke up. What is this? Why are all these, like, machines still running down here from the ice cream maker? Two cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge, and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Unplug the giant red cable. It'll turn off the, the fridge. We don't, we don't want that. Oh, we okay. need that to stay in working order. Ooh, I found a tank top. A tank top? I can get one more drama. I look terrible. Oh, no. Let's put that back on, yeah. Yeah, we don't need to see all that. This takes us right back out here. Oh. Hey, looky there. Well then. Well, it is starting to get dark a little bit. I probably don't need my flashlight anymore for this. Oh, whoop, hang on. I actually go to it and, there we go, deselect it. Well, maybe we can try and reconstruct the crime scene. You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. Why am I looking at this? Cop habit. You look at everything. Yeah. 
This isn't case related. What kind of vehicle drove through here? Hard to say. Your vision is blurred and you're having difficulty concentrating thanks to your relentless hangover. No. Yeah. These tracks are not interesting at all. Let the street sweeper just sweep them away. Man, I just can't cop today. Ugh. I mean, I did some great copping, but I just can't do regular copping, man. Huh. Kuna's still out here. Yeah, he's moping because I took down his fun. Kuna fucking electricity. Kuna volts. Well. Let's see. Talk to him again. Talk to Kuno again? Yeah. See what he knows? You think we can get anything out of him? Maybe. Let's find out. Fuck the Kuno cat? Kuno, I found your shack. You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack? It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? My face shifted to the roofing material. Shit. Get the fuck out of here. You can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that, Kuno. He's trying to fuck at you again. Pigs can't displace. Can't do that teleport shit. How did you like it in there, pig old boy? Kuno's got a lot of cool shit there, right? Is that my coat up there? Pretty sure it's mine. Is it? You've got pretty fuck. Kuno surprised you've still got your head after all that. After all what? Don't sweat the <clears throat> drunk pig. Kuno will keep your nasty secrets. Kuno's not snitching. What did I do? You're you fucking naked up there somehow. You probably saw me do it. Yeah, that conclusively explains how the coat got up. I there. get into the harbor from the roof. Cause you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just got a fly pig. <laughs> I've got to, oh I've got to jump to get in there. At my age, in my condition, in this part of the country. Not everyone can fly like Kuno. You're old. You'll never make it. Moose piss has made you scared in the head. <laughs> Moose piss is probably. Out yeah. Long. That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. This might help us with our uh, jumping fear. What was with the pig head? How was that? Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. <laughs> demo tape? Like, kind of musician? <laughs> cool pig head. I liked it. I got one too. This one. It's shit. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird <laughs> life. <laughs> Kuno doesn't go there. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Well, played. yes. No one saw that coming. <laughs> and Kim was like, what? Found a plate covered with powder residue. Know anything about it? That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too. Oh god, here we go, really. Oh, hey, electrochemistry. I figured you'd show up. But you could have that sparkle in your eyes. I've heard enough of this. Good call, pig myself. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Uh, you got anything else you want to ask him? Uh, what about the shack again? That's just the same questions. Okay, then get the hell out of here. All right, I'm out. Kuno doesn't fucking care. Kuno doesn't fucking care. That's cool, bro. You keep on not caring. You not care and not care you. Did you know there was actually a call box over here? An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Well, yeah, I've got 4D psychology playing on Kuno right there. You don't even care? East I don't even Delta care you don't care. This we got a whole bunch of buttons we can Holy press. Holy shit. Well, let's just start from the top. Main Hall Building A. An off-key melody starts playing after you ring the doorbell. Then a woman picks up the receiver. Kuno, please stop calling here. Grown ups don't have uh, time for your stupid games. She thinks you're the gremlin child. What would he say to this? You got pig, okay. Pardon? This is not Kuno. Who is this? <laughs> please stop calling here. I don't have time to deal with this. Thank you. A single beep indicates. 
suggests that the line has gone dead. Well, I'm going to have to call back every night now. Andrew Orlando Hare, SCA. You ring the doorbell, but no one answers. Huh. What an ominous name for a hair salon. Doesn't bode well for anyone's hair. Artemiteps boxing for young athletes and gym. It's probably the gym that we came into. Yeah. Is static, but no one answers the call. 24th window. You ring the doorbell, but nothing happens. Emma's fashion atelier. You wait for a minute or two, but all you get from the call box is silence. Fabron's taxi something all or other. All these uh, someone has melted businesses off that off have went it. out of business. The doorbell doesn't work anymore. Slipstream SCA. You hear static from the Oh, we got a hit. It sounds as if someone has picked up the receiver, but isn't saying anything. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Yes, hello. This is Tyson Emmy and Alexi. What the? Have you come to place an order? She sounds almost antique, as if her voice was being played off an old wax cylinder. The receiver must not be working properly. Wait, but what happened to Slipstream SCA? There's no tricentennial electrics on the list. Yes, I've come to place an order. Oh my god. The what? lieutenant exchanges a look with you. Sorry? It's you. Oh my god. I didn't think I would hear your voice. What the hell? It's a woman. And she knows you. Uh, your heart beats uh, faster. She must be mistaken for someone else. Who cares that you don't remember her? Just go along with it. Uh, which is it? Uh, I can't trust you, electrochemistry. Reaction speed says I should, you know, go with, along with the drama thing. I, I, don't, I don't know what. Something's wrong here. Are you sure she's talking to you? Yeah, it's me. <clears throat> yeah, it's me. Here I am again, crawling back into your life. Hold on. Tell me what's going on. What did I do? Ever since I came to work here, it's been dead. As if my mind's been wiped clean. What? The spot of static overrides her words. When she speaks again, it sounds like she's submerged. It's so nice. It's so nice to be able to finally forget. Forget about what? She sounds like she's about to cry. Hello? She doesn't answer. <gasps> you said it was nice. What's so nice about forgetting? Silence. The only thing you could hear. Oh my god, what happened really? Waves washing ashore on the bay. What just and happened? A seagull passes by. It's getting she went cold to the beach. Here, staring <laughs> at the silent call box. I don't know what happened either. We should probably stop playing with this thing. All right, it's a goodbye then. You press the number sign on the keypad that terminates the call. Twelve name cards on the call box read. I think we should come back to that later. Yeah. Uh, Fortress Accident SCA going down the list again. Silence. No one's home at Fortress Accident. That was the role-playing game that we were at earlier. Remishaw Ice City. Silence. Yeah, no there, one yeah. answers the doorbell. How about the whirling in rags? Nothing happens after you ring the doorbell. What? They don't want to talk to you. East Delta Pinball? Silence. No one answers your call. Empty card? This button looks new, but someone has removed the name card. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Huh. This button looks new. It's probably not connected yet. This has been a weird experience, I will admit. We are, uh... All right, so we owe 130 real, and I don't think we're going to have enough by the end of the day. So we got to try and get some money somehow, I think. Let's go sell those things we got at the pawn shop. Yeah. That's a great place to start. Don't worry about it so much, the game does have your back. Kim, downstairs, come on. <laughs> 
Come, come on, buddy. I know it's I know it's a creepy place, but it's fine. Roy's Roy's a good boy. Roy is our boy. Let's see if I can talk to Roy. There we go. Hello, hello. Let me know if I can help you with anything. There's something sure. I'd like to sell. Let me have anything else. All you're right, so the rifle and the well put. That gets us forty-eight bucks. That's still Whoa. nowhere near what we need. Thanks, Roy. Hmm. Well, that's all right for now, I suppose. So let's see. Um, let's see if we can't make the jump for my cloak yet. Oh yeah. I think it's about time we got that back. I think it's important that we make that jump because there's a lot of money in a lot of those places too. Not to mention health items and stuff galore. But the thing is, it's all just... It's, it's all down there. We have to make this really ridiculous Savoir Faire check in order to make it. Alright, we're, we're backed by physical instruments. You should save. Alright, so, let's see. Looking at my stuff here. That's a minus in Savoir Fair. Let's take off the shoes so we're ready. Uh, not, and take off the pants. We're going to definitely make sure that we can do this. Alright, so electric chemistry and an empire. Okay, okay, alright. Alright. You should save. Yeah, so we've taken off the pants and shoes. We can definitely make this jump. We can absolutely make this jump. We're going to do it. I've got physical instrument backing me up. We can do it. 42%. I like those odds. There we go. Here we go. Yeah! Woo! Hooah! As you leap in the air, a chilly breeze engulfs you, sharpening your senses. It's not that far down. I can just slide down. Continue the voyage to the salty air. <clears throat> As the concrete floor welcomes you, you realize it's been a while since you felt so alive, alert, capable. Must be, Must be the adrenaline. I knew you could do it. My climbing down might not have been as disco as your jump, but at least you can explore the harbor now. Well, that's who I am. I'm fucking your disco super cop. That was a super cop type move we did there. Yoink! All right, let's put our clothes back on. Got that. We mm, got that. All right. Looking really fancy there. Yeah. There's also this note from the fridge that we didn't look at yet. Oh. Let's check that out. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Well, next time you make any kind of jump, you should remove your pants and your shoes. I mean, what do you think Goku did in Dragon Ball? Right? Does it say anything interesting? This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. Someone has scribbled. S, I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff <laughs> from the studio. So Goddamn I Kuno. Somewhere safe. You'll find the filament memory with the offsite copy in the frozen ice cream maker. Please take it home, ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I live in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care, Suliswa. I wonder who wrote that note. Looks like someone yeah. from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Who's the illiterate ginger kid? Really? You don't have a single guess? <laughs> you mean Kuno? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on the filament memory. 
Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he's probably tried to pawn it for speed, based on our encounter. What's a filament memory? It belongs inside a radio computer, storing its memory. Oh, it's, like a tape. it's basically a tape to put in the radio computer. Yeah. Right, 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 right okay. Cool. Got that square away. I guess we can explore the harbor, but we can also kind of duck out of here. I got a, I got a book. I got a postcard. Are we in someone's house right now? Every worker a member of the board. Demand democracy. I, th I think we're in a union place here. Oh. Ooh, magnesium. We're gonna need a lot of healing items for what's about to come. On second glance, someone has forgotten to properly close one of the drawers. It's unfortunate for the Union to just leave their paperwork lying around like this. Open the drawer! The drawer opens smoothly. Inside is a well-organized selection of round folders. Let's look through the folders! Documents containing logistical data. Two kinds of transactions stand out. Materials... Boring! The same materials being handled... <laughs> Anything interesting? It's hard to make sense of this thicket of company. Uh, just a whole bunch of data and just, uh, any, is there anything interesting in this bucket of boring? No, there isn't! Your uh. hermeneutics was almost within your grasp, but now only vague letters float before your eyes. Less meaningful, but aesthetically more pleasing. Could I actually focus through not focusing? You are a police officer, not a spiritual human. You can uh, focus the normal way by turning your attention to something and not letting go. But if I let my eyes go completely out of focus, all shapes start melting into each other. Is that what you're doing with those folders over there? <laughs> no, of course not. Good. This is probably not relevant to our case anyway. Let's give it one so more shot. We're not investigating. You're oh, God. God. Making my eyes bleed. <laughs> Fuck this. Slides shut smoothly. Ugh. Well, what else we got in this place? Ooh, go down there. Cigarette butts. Snow is quietly covering the numerous wine bottles and cigarette butts on the ground. Someone partied really, really hard here. Wait, how hard? Well, they went through six bottles of potent Pilsner, three <sighs> bottles of Commodore Red, and almost four packs of cigarettes. It must have been pretty hard. Did I do this? Well, uh. I think we can say with relative confidence that it was you. What? Were you on a stakeout or something? You just fucking sat there? This is really sad. I must have been miserable. Yes. This scene isn't exactly ripping with joy. Let's just move on. I mean, how? look at all the bottles! There's so many of them! This is the night watchman's booth. The name on the door reads, Rene Arnaud. Listen, it's okay to take a few minutes to yourself. Sit down and have a breather. Kim, I'm gonna take a quick look inside. Is this where your wife was? Please hurry. We are pretty no, I don't think so. I think this is just where I just started feeling shitty about myself. Maybe something happened. Nothing catches your eye. The cabinets are clean and their sparse contents meticulously organized. There's a framed photograph on the table. What do you want to do with the photo? Take it. It's a black and white photo of a young couple out in a street fair. The man is young, dark skinned, and dressed in a Royal Carabiner uniform. The girl is smiling playfully at the camera. Why did you take that? <laughs> I'm a cop. It's instinctual to collect evidence. Fine. But let's move. I don't want to be seen snooping around here. Let's have a the seat chair rest. is not as austere as the rest of the booth. A thin grey pillow is attached to the seat, secured to the stiles by black ribbons. Search for a little some sum to help you out. The drawers are empty, save for old timesheets and receipts. One small box, however, does hold some cheap painkillers. Take them. They are slightly out of date. 
Okay, would you mind if I help myself to some meds? I'm not here to tell you what to do, detective. Then yoink. You take the painkillers. They are yours now. Oh boy, where to start? Elevated risk of dementia, mini strokes, prophet's disease, sudden death. Prophet's disease? Death. Hair, Hair death? death? Malfunction. Erectile malfunction? Flatulence. Uh, flatulence. critical flatulence? flatulence? Uncontrollable weeping. Increased sensitivity to la opera. Inoperable joint disorder. Total spinal collapse. What the fuck? That. Quick, think about something else. <laughs> so I'm a cop. Disco. Oh my god, I actually went up to him and actually said I want to have fuck with you earlier. What the hell is wrong with me? Yes. Maybe this was a bad idea. Let's get up. Alright, we're done here. You stand and exit the booth. Come on, Kim. There must be some reason why we're here. We gotta find some way out of here. You, are you coming? <laughs> oh, come on, let's go. Taking a sweet time. I know. Come on, let's go. A rusting control panel with several knobs. Two buttons marked Marsh and Arendt are failing with use. It seems to control the large crane above. A container is attached to its hook block. Marsh. On. Arendt. Marsh? With a loud grind, the crane shifts overhead, moving a massive metal container through the air. Uh. Wow! I'm a harborman now! <laughs> Something gonna open? With a surprisingly quiet thunk, the crane places the container down. The harbor sleeps as the strike rages in the distance. The crane can rest again, now that its purpose has been fulfilled. Its purpose? What do you mean? Moving this container, of course. For this purpose it was built. For this purpose it has acted. And now it will rest. Okay. Which means that I think we did a good? I can't see how that was worth the record. Except for seeing the crane in action, which I admit was satisfying. Yes, it was. It was quite satisfying. So much so, we had to autosave out of that. Yoink! Money! Awesome! Before you stands a cargo container. Just one of many in the yard. Lieutenant, I think there's something special about this container. You do? Because I don't. Uh, what? Why not? There are a million containers here. Why are you fixating on this one? Because mm. it was hanging from the crane. It was hanging from the crane. You just picked one up because you wanted to interact with the cargo container. We are not here to interact with containers. We are here to interview the union boss. Knock on the door. No reply. No reply. No reply. No reply. No reply. Open no the reply. door. No reply. Yes, no one's in there. You attempt to turn the handle to no avail. The doors seem to be mechanically locked. Why? Well, to your left, the lieutenant considers your actions with some oh. Please open. Why are you even trying to open the door with rhetoric? Yeah, why am I? Why are you what? Never mind. You're satisfied, detective. Uh, nothing more to do here for now. Keep that in mind, I guess. Another billion things we gotta keep on our plate. So, we're, I think we're about done for the night. We go through that door. Through that door is a very important character. It is the Union boss, Evrard Clare. 
He's the guy who's basically overseeing the strike, making these demands, and making everything hell for everybody here. Yeah, or, or, or maybe not. Depends on what, on what route you do. So we'll talk to him next time. But to finish tonight, we're going to talk to this guy over here. Oh, I love Easy Leo. The lyrics to this container song are being made up as he goes along. The accent is so thick, it's impossible not to notice he's Ubi from the vanishing peninsula of Ubisoft on Mundi. Container, container, used to be well time. Container, container, now belongs to Error. Hi! Ebrard, 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 he looks after everyone. Huh? Well, huh? hey there. How can I help you, mister? I see you are not a union man, mister. Did you get lost? You're not one of them scabs, are you? No. No, of course not. I mean, I don't personally mind. Folks are just folks, you know. And folks gotta eat. Well, they do gotta eat. Just some of the other guys don't look too kindly on the scabbing kind, if you know what I mean, mister. Uh, you're Ubi, right? Oh, yes. Born and raised in Arayish, mister. Mum had to leave my dad after he got a bit violent. Took us here to the new, new world. The new, new world! The new, new world! People say us Ubis are up to all sorts of trouble with sheep and other animals and whatnot. I just want you to know there was never any of that where I come from. No, sir. Those are just nasty rumors. Thank you for clarifying that, sir. D what are you doing with the containers? Oh, I'm just making some covers for them containers here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. So it's easier for the crane operators to spot them. T no, uh, I, I did not speak to him because of the uh, New World joke. Uh, <laughs> we'll try that again later. I want to get some logic boosting first yeah, when we back out here. About what? All right, where is everyone? The harbor's empty. Oh, most of the guys are down at the gates, keeping the scabs from coming in. We're on uh. a strike. The whole union is. You don't have to work when you're on strike. <laughs> we haven't worked for two months now. But aren't you working right now? So yeah. everyone is working? <laughs> Not everyone is down there, of course. Mr. Ebrard is in his office, where he always is. And Jean-Luc is guarding the gates. But Titus and his boys got into some drunken trouble and Ebrard sent them on a nice vacation for a week or so. Hmm. Hmm. What kind of trouble did this... Titus and his friends get into. Oh, I'm not really supposed to talk about that. That's union business. Him and his boys stirred up something in town. Probably drank too much and got into a fight or something. I heard Mr. Ebrat telling them to take some time off. But what do they actually do? I guess the boys got a bit too rowdy and had to let out some steam. Mm. I don't really know the details. Well, that's just how boys are, you know. <laughs> I haven't been in a fight since I was in middle school. You know, I don't doubt that for a second there, Leo. Yeah. Easy, Leo. Let's keep this on the high heat. Look at him. It's not going to be anything useful anyway. Don't fight it. Better to go with the flow. Too rowdy? Leo, what kind of fight did they get into? Did they kill a mercenary? Too late. Leo's men yeah. are still moving, and the words are spewing forth. He's, words, oh words, boy. and look, mm, yeah, even I... more words. This guy could go on till the end of days. What do you think he's talking about? It's like, oh yeah, see this one kid, he was he was saying about how he didn't like the way that my clothes looked and it made me cry a whole lot and then he didn't like the way that the tears were rolling down my face. And I didn't like that either. And then he said that my hair looked stupid and well, mister, that's three strikes in a row and then I punched him in the gut and then I punched him in the face and then I kicked him in the shin. Now he's talking about some drunk sawmill owner who, no, he already switched to a prized fishing rod he apparently owned at some point. You know what? Just cut in there uh, with your questions. Uh, 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 d uh, d d what's in that container over there? That should be empty as far as I know. Lots of containers here have nothing in what? them. What? They're just waiting to be loaded up. Container, container. Told you. Okay, okay Mr. Smarty Pants Kim. Alright, let's go ahead and get the clothes out again. Let's see. Uh, perception. Does my necktie reduce my... Okay. So nothing increases logic. That's okay. So. 
I get another quick save. Do another save scum before we end for tonight. Oh, hey, mister. I may be back to talk with old Leo here. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. It's like Lady Larice said when she opened a bathhouse in the basement of my apartment building. They oh, Leo. They get so far before they're oh, Leo. Back. And lots of folk really did keep coming back. I had some questions for you, if that's not too much trouble. No Can we keep this all, green no really? We do with the containers, all right. Let's see here. What's going on here? Bam! Goodest of the good cops. We copped our way to superstardom, kind of. Super cop. It's all red in human color. It's like some red infection was spreading outwards from the container yard. Redecorating. This looks like a massive redecorating operation, Kim. Yes, they are hiding it from the inside. All the red containers. The Union logo on them. Leo, has anyone told you why you need to change the covers? No, not really. Mr. Everett doesn't tell me all the big things. Uh. Says I go and tell them to everyone. Thanks, Leo. You've been very helpful. Oh, no trouble at all, mister. No trouble at all. Mm -hmm. wow. Okay, I'm off. Well, we're going to take that, that piece of information. We're going to stick it into our breast pocket keep that there for a little while super hobo cop and we are the, the, the newly christened super hobo cop because we know all about metal containers small ones and large ones of yep. course so we can uh, we can detect that kind of shit so next time next week on disco elysium we're gonna finally talk to Everard claire and see what, ooh, what's over here Ooh, money Mons! I really need some money, though. I really need some goddamn money. But we're going to talk to Everard Claire and see what he has to tell us. Thanks, everybody, for watching.